Hello listeners, and welcome back to Sandman Stories Presents. This is another folk tale, but it's also a ghost story, so I'm recording it during Halloween, and it should come up around there. This story comes from the folk tales of Bengal by Lal Bahari Day. He talks about a wife being replaced by a Sakchuni, or Bengali ghost, and it needs to be exercised by Oja, or spiritual doctor. Okay, let's begin. A Ghostly Wife Once upon a time there lived a Brahmin who had married a wife and who lived in the same house with his mother. Near his house was a tank on the embankment of which stood a tree on the bows of which lived a ghost of the kind called Sakchuni. One night the Brahmin's wife had occasion to go to the tank and as she went by she brushed by a Sakchuni who stood near on which the she-ghost got very angry with the woman seized her by her throat, climbed her into the tree, and thrust her into a hole in the trunk. There the woman lay almost dead with fear. The ghost put on the clothes of the woman and went into the house of the Brahmin. Neither the Brahmin nor his mother had any inkling of the change. The Brahmin thought his wife returned from the tank, and the mother thought that it was her daughter-in-law. Next morning, the mother-in-law discovered some change in her daughter-in-law. Her daughter-in-law, she knew, was constitutionally weak and languid and took a long time to do the work of the house. But she apparently became quite a different person. All of a sudden, she became very active. She now did the work of the house in an incredibly short time. Suspecting nothing, the old woman said nothing either to her son or to her daughter-in-law. On the contrary, she inwardly rejoiced that her daughter-in-law had turned over a new leaf. But her surprise became every day greater and greater. The cooking of the household was done in much less time than before. When the mother-in-law wanted the daughter-in-law to bring something from the other room, it was brought in much less time than was required in walking from one room to the other. The ghost, instead of going inside the next room, would stretch a long arm, for ghosts can lengthen or shorten any limb of their bodies, from the door and get the thing. One day the old woman observed the ghost doing this. She ordered her to bring a vessel from some distance, and the ghost unconsciously stretched her hand several yards distance and brought it in a trice. The old woman was struck with wonder at the sight. She said nothing to her, but spoke to her son. Both mother and son began to watch the ghost more narrowly. One day the old woman knew that there was no fire in the house, and she also knew that her daughter-in-law had not gone out of the house to get it. And yet, strange to say, The hearth in the kitchen was quite in a blaze. She went in, and to her infinite surprise, found that her daughter-in-law was not using any fuel for cooking, but had thrust into the oven her foot, which was blazing brightly. The old mother told her son what she had seen, and they both concluded that the young woman in the house was not his real wife, but a she-ghost. The son witnessed those very acts of the ghost which his mother had seen, and Oja was sent for. The exorcist came and wanted in the first instance to ascertain whether the woman was a real woman or a ghost. For this purpose, he lit a piece of turmeric and set it below the nose of the supposed woman. Now this was an infallible test, as no ghost, whether male or female, can put up with the smell of burnt turmeric. The moment the lighted turmeric was taken near her, she screamed aloud and ran away from the room. It was now plain to see that she was either a ghost or a woman possessed by a ghost. The woman was caught hold of by main force and asked who she was. At first she refused to make any disclosures, on which the Oja took up his slippers and began belaboring her with them. Then the ghost said with a strong nasal accent, for all ghosts speak through the nose, that she was a Sakchuni, that she lived on a tree by the side of the tank, that she had seized the young Brahmani and put her in the hollow of her tree, because one night she had touched her, and that if any person went to the hole, the woman would be found. The woman was brought from the tree almost dead. The ghost was again shoe-beaten, after which process, on her declaring solemnly that she would not do any harm again to the Brahmin and his family, she was released from the spell of the Oja and sent away, and the wife of the Brahmin recovered slowly after which the Brahmin and his wife lived many years happily together and begat many sons and daughters. The End
was a really interesting story. I thought it was strange that, you know, just bumping against a ghost was enough to make the ghost angry and take her and throw her into a tree. I was really happy to find out that the wife didn't die and the, the wife was actually okay. It was also a little bit strange that, oh, well, you know, she's doing things much faster, so, oh, maybe it's okay. Oh, you're sleeping next to a ghost. That's a ghost in your house. All right, and today's podcast shout-out is to Across the Veil. As many folks know, there's a saying that there's a thin veil between our world and the supernatural. Emma and Zelda do a great job of tackling cryptids, spooky tales, and general supernatural activities. They really pull back that veil and look at everything supernatural. And if you like their podcast as much as I do, go and give them a five-star rating on Podchaser or iTunes. And the listener shout-out is to Dubai of the UAE. You are 62% of my listeners in the Emirates. Speaking my poor Arabic that I learned some 20 years ago, Alef shukran wa tisbalakhir. Thank you, and good night.